And we are live. I'm just waiting on some people to join in. And we will get started. Good morning, Sue. Hey, Louise. Do a sound check, make sure everything's okay. Hope you guys can hear me. Hi, Deborah. From New York. I'm down here in Hampton, Georgia. Looks like some people are coming on. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Joan. This is our first Pinteresting project. Uh, Vicki Parker uh, picked this project for us to do. And I'm glad she picked this one. This one's kind of a tricky one. And it's going to show you guys a lot of tips and tricks in design space and how you can achieve it. Hi, Cindy. A few people are coming on now. We're getting some people in here. So even if you are experienced with design space, you may pick up some tips and tricks on how to achieve these looks. And if you're brand new to design space, these kind of tutorials are going to be great for you because you're going to see how to use several of your tools in design space. So let's go ahead and play the intro and we will get started, guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, Patty. All right. The first thing you guys are going to need today to follow along is to pull up your design space. Um, put it in a little corner or anything, or you can just play this back and do it at a later time. So... You guys don't pay attention to the mess behind me. It has been catastrophic here this week. Um, I know you can only see a tiny bit of the mess, but an explosion went off in this room, trust me. <laughs> but anyway, let's go over to Design Space and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of tips and tricks even you experienced users can use. And we're going to design Vicky's Pinterest pen that she gave to us. Okay, so I have my design space up and the first thing that I'm going to do because I am trying to replicate um, a project that was found on Pinterest, I took a screenshot of it to help me out and I'm going to click my upload button and I'm going to click my upload button. Now, if you do this, you won't be able to share um, your project if you hit save, but you can take it out and do a save as, and um, then you'll be able to share it as long as you use all design space images. So you're going to hit browse 
after you've done your screenshot and you're going to grab your screenshot. Now I've got two and I'm going to bring them both in. And this is the one where I created um, the Patreon project. And these are all the images that I used. That way I don't have to have two design space screens open. But if you want to do that and keep flipping back and forth, by all means you can do that too. I just find this a little bit easier. I'm just going to save it. I'm not going to name it and tag it because after I do my project, I'm going to delete it. So I am going to go over there and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to insert it. Hi Debbie. Hi Brenda. And I'm just going to kind of make it small and I'm going to stick it over here in the corner so I have it for reference if I need it. And then I'm going to upload my other image, which is a picture of the project. I took a screenshot of it. So I'm going to browse and I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to open it up. And you can complex, simple, whatever you want. I'm not going to clean any of this up and I'm just going to save it. Again, I'm going to delete it when I'm done, so there's no need for me to name and tag this. And this one might be a little bit slow. And you can see that this Pinterest project, it's a shape abilities, it's a spellbinders die. Okay, and if you want it to be exact, by all means, they're fantastic dies, guys. I, I buy some of them myself, especially when I want a quick project. Uh, because I can use those, run them through my cuddle bug, and glue them together, and I'm done. I don't have to take time to pick papers and cut and put them on mats and stuff like that when I'm in a hurry. So now I have the two things, and usually you're not going to have this. I just wanted you guys to see um, if you're patrons and you have the file that I created, this is what I used. And it's going to give you guys a point of reference as to what to look for when we go looking for images. Hi, Brenda and Denise. So, now we, you have, if you're ne brand new to Design Space and you don't know, you just learned how to upload an image for print and cut. How easy was that? And then you're just going to save your project. And this, I'm just going to name this a tutorial so I can delete it later because I'm not going to need it. And you can see that I didn't have a public thing because I uploaded an image. So I'm not going to be able to share it. Now I can delete these later if I don't use any uploaded images and do a save as. And then I should be able to save and share my project uh, publicly. So the first thing we have to do to create this is basically we have to have this domed shape. Now I can go and I can start searching all the design space images over here for something that shape or I can just create it. So I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to get a square because the bottom of it's square and I need a circle. The top of it's round. So I've got both. And they're going to come in at 3.11. That's the default. I don't know why 3.11 is the default, but it is. Now, my box card is a little bit taller, but I tend to like taller box cards. If you want your shorter, you, there's a step that I'm going to show you where you can make your shorter. Um, if, but it's going to limit you in your design at the bottom. So once I've got those two shapes, I'm going to kind of line them up till I get this initial shape that I have here. I'm going to select them both and you can do that by dragging a box around them or you can click on one, hold your shift key and click on the other and you'll see that they highlight in gray over here in the layers panel. And then I am going to come down here to the bottom and weld. Now I have this basic shape. If you want it to be shorter like theirs, oops, I didn't mean to click that. If you want it to be shorter like theirs, come in here and get a shape. Get yourself a square. Unlock it. And I'm just going to duplicate that so that I have one to work with. Come in here and get it to the height that you want. Select both and slice. Now, a lot of you, I've seen a lot of people say, I can't slice, I can't slice. If I select three images, look what happens. I lose it. You can only slice two 
layers and if you look in this layers panel to the right I have three selected it's not going to give me the slice option you can only slice two layers at a time I could weld these two images together and then slice this one from that but I cannot select all three without them being two images so let's just slice it and get rid of the trash and now you have that shorter shaped that you have here so it's just going to depend on the look you want and how you want yours to look so do your height now because you're not going to be able to shorten it and skew it later it's not going to look right um, so I'm just saying make sure you get your initial shape down first that's the most important step and again I wanted mine taller I like a 5 by 7 card so that's why I left mine tall and it gave me more room and more options to work with and we're not trying to duplicate Spellbinders shape abilities die exact we are making this our own this is our inspiration we're not out to copy it we're, we're inspired to create and be creative on our own and make it our own because if I want it exact again I'm going to go out and buy the die so now I have this I'm going to duplicate one and I'm just going to change the color of this one and I'm just going to make it a light gray that's going to be my vellum in the back so I need it to be slightly smaller than this I'm going to arrange and I'm going to send that one to the back and I'm going to come up here and make this one three inches that's going to make it slightly smaller so that I can glue it in and when I put my other shapes together and do everything I've got a little bit of room so that when I make my scores and my folds my vellum is not going to end up in those folds and cause me not to be able to flatten my card and I'm going to show you that real quick we're going to go back over to the project camera just so I can show you what I mean by that so I have this is my mock-up guys and the file that you have in uh, Patreon on the design tab is slightly different because this was my mock-up piece because these pieces didn't work and I used I wanted to use a clear window at the top but I had to cut pieces and I did that um, secondary piece in there for the bottom and I didn't glue it down like I was supposed to all around the bottom it was just a test but in the real world it would have been glued down and stable um, but you want to be able to fold your card flat and if you put a bunch of 3d flowers all over on all four sides it's probably going to need a 3d envelope so but you want to be able to make sure that it will fold flat and then you have room to put your um, stabilizers in there and that's what you're going to glue whatever you want to put in your box card if you want flowers they had one picture where the flowers were inside it whatever you want to be standing up in those windows will be attached to those brace pieces and I have fixed them because they show through on the sides whether you use vellum or clear I have fixed them where you can use the clear acetate and they won't show except for the thin line of it because I have snipped out this part and I'm going to show you guys how to do that so that's what I just wanted to show you why it's important that you make it smaller because if it meets and it's the exact same size when you go to fold this that's not going to fold well so be mindful when you're doing liners that you make sure you make them slightly smaller than the original piece so that you have some space and you can probably even go maybe 0 0.10 smaller than this if you want to so let's go back over to design space I just want to make sure you guys have a sample and you know what I'm not talking about so it's not foreign to you so I've allowed that space for my folds I am going to take this one and I know that this has four sides so I'm going to duplicate it I need four and I'm just going to go ahead and group those and I'm going to come up here to the eyeball and I'm going to hide my group I don't need those right now they're just liner pieces they have nothing actually to do with my design they're just going to cover the inside of this piece so the next step we notice that there is a window here and it has all these tiny let me see if I can blow this up so you can see it and in hindsight I probably wouldn't do this 
again in design space but it is in the file if you want to contour and close these out you can but it has all these little dots cut out all the way around that top half I went all the way around the bottom so in hindsight I'm going to change that up just a little bit so let me pull that out of the way so I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is get my circle and let's make this I don't know a pretty purple so you guys can see and I'm going to make this white so that we can see it now if I slice that out I'm just going to end up with this shape down at the bottom which if you're going to do a liner if you're going to do that clear and do vellum on the bottom like I did that this is how you would achieve that you would slice this duplicate it and slice it and then just use a square and take off those points and that's going to give you that panel for the bottom uh, and it, it's going to fit that's how you know it's going to fit but we're not going to do that with this one I'm just going to make this 2.5 I believe it was and you can judge how big you want your windows and stuff like that I'm leaving myself a space up there so I've got that where I can cut that window out I'm ready to go there and then let's just go ahead I think I do want that to a point right there let's do that let me get me another shape I get another circle I'm gonna duplicate this arrange bring it to the front I am going to select the two align center it horizontally align it at the top going to while they're both selected come to the bottom and slice good morning Brenda Anita are you here <laughs> I see 61 62 do you have if you have a question guys put it in caps and and we'll answer it just as quickly as we can and I'm just going to unlock this square I'm going to bring it down to about right there and I'm going to slice it I'm just going to get rid of that trash and let's make this one white too that way we have two cutouts I'm going to make this one smaller I'm going to bring that one down to about 2.5 I think so that they line up you want to make sure that it's up from the bottom just about the same size as the sides there we go and so now it can you see that it's starting to take on the shape of our pinned project do you guys see how that's coming to light there and that's a little that's okay the flowers are going to go there so if it's not perfectly round there you can re-slice it you can size this I should have sized this prior to slicing it and that's what I'm saying if you can see there's a little dip there it's not quite round but that's okay because your flowers are going to go there whatever your decor and it will still look good no matter what you do but in the real world if you want that to be a perfect circle right there you need to size that square then slice it and then cut those tips off and then it will be in there perfect so I'm going to take these two shapes actually I'm going to take all three just in case I make an error I'm going to duplicate it and I'm just going to set it to the side and we're going to line those up align them horizontally make sure everything's in line this looks good as far as the width matching at the bottom on the sides I'm liking that so the next thing that I'm going to do is slice no slice remember what I said about three pieces I have three pieces and it's not going to give me the slice option okay so I'm going to click on that one without moving anything I'm going to hold my shift key and click the circle now I only have two pieces the two white pieces and I'm going to weld them now they're going to move as one piece okay 
I'm going to select them both. I'm going to align and center it. And now I'm going to come down here and slice it. Now I have my shape. You can see the grid behind it. So now I have my open artwork. Okay. And I have my duplicates over here in case I need anything and they're all separated. The next thing that we need to do, let me just grab these three pieces. I'm going to group them and I'm going to hide it. Don't need it right now, but it's there in case. So now they have this filigree artwork and this little crown or filigree at the top. And then they have all those little holes around there. How do we get those? Because we can't do the dotted lines and the scores. Uh, we can change our score lines all day long to cut lines or draw lines, but we can't curve them. So how do we get those dots or that stitch thing like I want? Hey Jamie, welcome. Glad you made it. Okay, moving on. Um, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to get text. Guys, you can use text for a lot of things. Lots and lots and lots of things. If you want that dashed cut line and things like that, um, or just the dashes cut out, you can do that. But I'm just going to go in and I am going to put, you guessed it, some dots. And I am going to go in and I'm going to pick a font that will give me a circle instead of that squared off dot. It uh, can be any, any font that gives you that. doesn't matter. Uh, let's see about Aaron. There we go. The Aaron script gives me those round little dots. The next thing I'm going to do is come up here to curve. And I'm going to start curving that. If you want it to go halfway around, that's perfectly fine. If you want it to go all the way around, you can do that too. If I can get hold of it here, it doesn't want to let me grab it. There we go. I'm going to start curving it. But I'm going to get my handles here and I'm going to squeeze it down to size because I know that that is three inches wide. So I'm going to take this to probably about a 2.75 and then I'm going to start my curvature from there. I can grab it. Sometimes these little ones can be hard to maneuver. Let me use my arrow keys and just slide it over and then arrow down. And that's a little bit too much curve. Maybe not. It's just a little too much. I'm going to back it off a little bit. That's, that's about right. Now I'm going to select them both. I'm going to align center horizontally. And now I have my dots. Now, if you want your dots to go all the way around, add more dots and curve it more. That's all, that's all you're going to have to do to get your dots to go all the way around. So let's just select them. Let me go over here and grab them in the layers panel. be easier. If it'll give me my text box. Maybe I move this out of the way. More than one way. You have a zoom down here at the bottom, guys. You can just zoom it in. There we go. When you're working with smaller pieces sometimes, I'm just going to add dots till they go around. And you can put spaces between your dots if you want less dots. I'll just curve that a little bit more. There, there they go. So now I have all of my dots. I can select the two pieces, align, center horizontally, and that's a little bit, little bit too many dots. See what happens? So you just have to play with it and get them. So I'm just going to undo a couple. I'm going to size that 
curve it some more and then size it down. There we go. Take out a few. I don't want that many dots. I'd rather them be spaced out more. And let's go to curve. I'm just going to slide my slide all the way around. And then I know that I want that to be probably about 2.75 or 2.5. 2.65. Let's try 2.65. 2.75 was right. But you're just going to play with them till you get your look. That looks almost there. You want to give it enough space. You don't want it really, really, really close to the edge. So I'm going to go in and make it 2.8. There we go. Now I'm going to align that center it horizontally and then you're going to have to bump it up at the top however you want and just kind of line that in. Once you have that you're going to select and slice because I haven't ungrouped because I haven't ungrouped the text it is still one layer if you look over here in that layers panel I just have one dot there even though it's many dots so I'm allowed the slice option. You're just going to slice those out. And then you're just going to get rid of it. And then you have your dots around the edge. Uh, duplicate and flip them at the bottom. You can do that too, Sue. But you'd have to weld them together. If you're talking about doing the dots that way, you can do it that way. I just like to do it this way to make sure that I have a perfect circle to go around the circle that I cut out. Because I know it's a perfect circle. So now the next thing we have to do is our filigree parts. We're getting there, guys. You guys are learning how to actually design. And again, like I said, this looks a little off. And that's because I didn't size my square before. I sliced it if you remember I said that um, but the flowers are going to go here so it will be hidden but if you want it to be perfect make sure you redo that and, and size it before you slice. Hi Lori. And then we're going to search for images and I typed in I think a couple of different things. I typed in flourish and I look for flourishes. As you can see, there are tons. You can use any of these guys. Um, lots of stuff in here you can use. You can weld these pieces together and use those. You can use any of this. Make it your own. Here are the leaves that we used. Um, just different things. You can use any of that. Uh, let's see if I can find. That's why I put that in my canvas. I'm just going to cancel this. Uh, just for time purposes, you can look and you can find all that. I think we're about done with this other than flowers and leaves. And you can do any decor you want. You don't have to do those. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And here's mine that I used. Just for time purposes, it's M83C8DOB. And it's called Paper Lace uh, 2. So let's just go over to images and I'm going to type in paper lace. See what we come up with. Hmm. I know it's got to be in here. Look at all these pretty images. You could slice out a piece here and use those. Just tons of stuff you can use. Maybe it's paper lace. Maybe if I put the two in there it will help narrow it down. Sometimes too much searching. Those are close. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay, when all else fails, let me cancel and actually get the image number. And this is how I'm going to do that because I'll never remember flipping from back and forth. It's hashtag M83. C-8-D-O-B. Did I put a zero in there? Hopefully that's it. I'm going to command C and copy that. I can delete it. Get images. Select. Paste it in and search. It's a zero, not an O. There we go. And there it is. And it's paper lace too. It's flourish off of paper lace too. So I'm just going to select that. Oops. It didn't like that, did it? Let me change that again. Select it and insert it. Okay, and again, I'm going to duplicate that and I'm just going to set it off to the side in case I mess anything up. And I'm just going to size it down until it looks like I want it to without getting into my circles, but it will attach at the top and give me a pretty look on my project. Now you can bring this down further. You can shrink it down where you don't have these tails that are coming off the side. It's however you want it to look. But in mine, I really liked that filigree look and that's how I liked it. So I selected them both. Again, very important to align, guys. Center it horizontally. Barely moved. There we go. And next step, weld. Oops, it filled in. You see how that filled in right there? Now you can leave that. You've got flowers going up there, whatever you want. But if you don't want that to fill in, it's the same as with a font. If a little bit, and you can see there's a tiny bit right there of my circle is inside those, that will cause that because you're asking it to weld that. All you got to do is bump it up a little bit and then weld again. Still filled in. So I got to go up a little bit more. And select them both and weld. And now I have these open. Now those two tiny little pieces right there are not going to cut well. I know they're not going to cut well. How can I fix that? Well, I can put a little shape over that and weld it, or I can do the really easy thing. I can select it, come to my contour, and click on that little piece. Oops. Let's hide all contours, show all contours. There we are. Go to contours, and I'm just going to find it in there. I think that's it right there, and then that one right there. That's the two. And now they're gone. So it won't cut those. When you have teeny tiny pieces like that, that's the best thing that you can do. It's just to contour it out. Because you don't want it to rip your paper right there and, and give you a little hole and make you miscut and have to redo it. Okay? So now that we have that, the next step is to do the bottom piece. So we're going to, let me zoom this back out so you guys can see. I'm going to bring this one in, and I'm going to size that down. And I may want to flip this one. So I'm going to say flip it vertical. Because I kind of like the way that that looks in there. Let me arrange and bring it to the front so that I can see where it's fitting. And that way it's attached. You can even unlock this and skew it slightly and it's still going to match. Just so that it's touching that circle on both sides. Don't want that circle in there and down at the bottom. So let's scoot it in just a tiny bit. Don't want to fill in my spacing there and there. So I'm just going to play with it.
and I might have a little area right there. That looks about right. So I'm going to select it, I'm going to align, I'm going to center that horizontally, and weld. And again, I've got these two little places right here. I don't need those. The flowers are going over that. I'm not going to make my Cricut try to chew up my cardstock with that. So I'm going to contour. Oops. And you can see what happens if you miss it. And I keep missing it. You want it to highlight. But I can see it right here. So I'm going to select those two pieces right there. And they're gone. Now we have our panel. That is the first step. Guys, at this point, or actually, every time you do a step, I would save. I'm, I'm really bad at saving. Um, because when you're doing a lot of slicing, welding, contouring, you can bog down your design space if you don't have a good internet connection and lose your work. So I'm going to say every time that after you've sliced out your circle in this, you save. You weld on this, you save. You put in your circles and you slice them, you save. You put in this flourish, you save. Get in that habit. It's a really hard habit for me to break, but get in that habit. It's going to save you a lot of heartache in the long run. Hey, Miss Sheila. I'm glad you joined us. I saw you slip in just a second ago. So now we're ready to make this four panels. And because I want mine a bigger size, I did mine in two panels. So uh, the next thing we need, we're going to need a hexagon. Okay, so I'm going to select my, well, I'm going to need a square. I think I need another square. I don't know. Yes, I need another square. And I'm going to need a hexagon. I'm going to need a score line. So I'm just kind of grabbing some of the stuff that I'm going to need here. So now that I have all of that, I am going to take, I'm just going to pull this out of my way, my square and I'm going to stretch it. I only want a piece of this. Okay, I'm going to select the two and I'm going to slice. And I am getting rid of that. I'm going to duplicate that because I may need it again. I know I'm going to need it again, so I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees. I'm just going to set it off to the side. I am going to duplicate my panel because I know that my to make the box I need four panels and I am going to put these right up next to each other just to where I have a thin faint line if you've got a big thick line you're you're not going to make it and that's not going to make it either that's going to be cut you want to make sure that you have a really thin line right there select them both and I would duplicate and move one Again, hide it just in case. And we're going to align bottom. We're going to come over to the weld and weld those two pieces together. Okay. This is one half of your box. We're all, almost there. At this point, you would probably align, bring it to the front. I like to change my score line to a cut because it gives me a good solid line. I can line it up, see where it goes, and make sure it goes from that point A to point B all the way to the bottom. And Because when it's a score, you can't tell where it starts and stops because your handles are sometimes in the way. So that's what I like to do. Now I'm just going to move it off to the side. I have it the size that I want it, and I don't need it right now. I am going to take this tab, and this is very important, guys. That tab, I'm just going to put it right there. 
I'm going to align at the bottom. You don't want it so wide that it shows in your circle or so tall that it shows in your circle, okay? Because when they're looking through, they're going to see that in the corner of the box because this has a window on all four sides. So let's arrange and send that to the back. And I am just going to shorten this down. We don't need a huge tab for this. And if you want, I put mine together and I will show you guys. You cannot really see where the two are joined. I did not put a tab up here at the top. If you want one to try to make yours a little more stable, you can do that. You're just going to duplicate it and bring another one up. But you want to make sure that your width is not wider than this band right here. Okay, so that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to unlock it. And I don't want it to be wider than that band because that's what it's going to glue to on the next panel. So you can duplicate that and bring one up right here if you want to have two. But you're going to make sure that you stay out of that circle. So it's totally up to you how many tabs you want. I found that one was sufficient. I'm just going to unlock it and stretch it. I'm just going to bring it. That looks good to me. I'm going to select it. I'm going to bring it in close. And I may leave it there so you guys can see. I'm going to align bottom and weld. If you don't get it close enough, see that black line? That's going to cut. It's going to cut your tab off. Okay? And that's what I was saying a while ago. If you don't get it in close enough, then you will get that. So I'm just going to bring it in where I know I see just a faint line. Select them both. Align bottom and weld. I'm going to duplicate that score line. I'm going to change it to a cut so that I can see it. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to adjust it so that I know where it's going to score. And Let me select it and change it back to score. Don't forget to change it back to score or you're going to cut your panels where you welded right back in half. Arrange. I'm going to move this to the front and I'm going to align it. See, that's why I can't align it. It just helps me to see it better if I put it on a draw or a... So I want it right there, right there in those tips, right down to the bottom. And now change it back to score. I'm going to select both my score lines and attach them before I put them on my project. And, and the reason being, if I need to change anything or do anything, I don't want to have to reset all my score lines. So that way, if I have to detach them and work on my piece, I can do that and then just pop them right back on there and they're going to fit where they need to be. And I can line them up much easier than doing them all individually. And that really comes in handy when you have five or six score lines on a box piece. So, and then you're going to attach those to your panel. Let me change this to white so you guys can see it a little bit better. And to do that, because I have things attached, if you notice it says line type multiple up here, if I change the color or change anything right now, it messes all of that up. You need to come over to your layers panel and select just the piece till you get that color box and then change that in your line type. But now you can see all my pieces are in there. It's already taken shape. It's ready. I'm going to duplicate it. My box is done. It's finished. Just a couple of finishing touches. we got to do our panels. And so I'm going to come in here and this piece that I had, I don't need it anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to hit save. And those two will glue together just like this. You'll fold on all your scores. They're going to glue right there. This tab is going to glue to this one when you're done. And let's, I don't need this. You guys can pick your flowers and stuff like that. I'm going to unhide that. That was my weld result from my original. I really don't need those anymore. 
except I want to put a liner piece and I'm going to get into that right now. Here are my panels. I'm going to ungroup those just so we can have one. Those are going to fit right back behind. Let me send it to the back. Those are going to fit right behind these panels. Now you can do a colored cardstock. You can do anything you want with that, but you make sure that you have your window, okay? So now that you have your window, but I like to finish mine off on the inside, especially if it may be seen through those windows. So what I did is I got a shape, I got a circle, and I brought my circle in. And it's going to give strength to my box as well. And I made it just slightly smaller. No rhyme, no reason. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to move that to the side. And then I'm going to make this one slightly larger than my inside circle. Right there. I'm going to align the two. Center. And I'm going to slice. And you can make these as big as you want or as wide as you want um, for your stability or whatever. I just think it gives it a nice finish since it's open at the top all the way around. And I am going to glue that over my vellum, where my vellum meets on the back. So, of course, you want to change the color to the same color cardstock as your box. But that's just going to go to all the way to the back on the inside of your card. And that's just going to give that vellum something to hide the glue is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> because when we glue vellum, um, art glitter glue gives you the least amount up where you can see that. But sometimes you will still see the glue. This is going to hide where you glued your vellum down. And it's going to give you a more finished look. If you're using a colored cardstock or something in there and embossing it and putting happy birthday in writing on here or, or something like that, you don't need that piece. It will be perfectly fine without it. But if you're gluing down vellum, you really need that little finished piece. You don't need it down at the bottom because you're going to have panels that are st stuck in there. But right there at the top, it will hide that glue. Does that make sense to everybody? It's just a finishing piece. But you're going to need four of them. So you're just going to duplicate that and give yourself four. Just to hide your glue lines. That's why I said you can make it as thick as you want it or as thin as you want it. You just need it to cover your glue. No, it will fold flat with the bottom. I have them in this one. And I'm going to show you how to even take the bulk down on those. It, this is basically a box card, guys. We don't need this piece anymore. I don't really need that. I'm going to redo those. Don't need that. That was just our backup in case we messed up here or if you wanted to put one at the top. So now our card is basically finished. We have our four panels or two panels that are going to make four. We have our four pieces of vellum and we have our finishing pieces. So let me go over to the camera and show you that again on the folding. You can fold this flat. Your panels will fold flat. Now ignore my vellum because like I said, I didn't glue it down properly. This was my mock-up. But yes, your box will fold flat. If You may need a dimensional envelope if you're going to make all your flowers um, 3D. But then again, I did these just to give them a little puff up, and they're not, it's not that thick. So this is going to fit in a, an envelope that's, that's 7 inches by 7 inches. So you're going to need a 7-inch square envelope. It's going to have to be a two-piece envelope. I can tell you that right now. So I can make you guys a dimensional envelope if you give me the dimensions of what you make your card out to be. I will make one for this file that I did. Um, but you're going to size yours and make your envelope according to your card, your finished product. So, but it will stand back up, no problem. And this is what I was talking about, where the two panels meet. If you want to put a second tab there to make that meet, 
by all means you can do that but I didn't really find that it was needed it doesn't really show unless you point it out standing up or on all of that it really didn't matter and it just less bulk and it looks better when you lay it flat in the envelope and it comes out so I just didn't put one at the top okay is that making sense to everybody how cool is this? And we need to thank Vicki again. Now be aware, guys, when you do that filigree piece at the top, it's going to be very delicate. So you may want to just go ahead and put some curves in them so that it, I got one curve to the back. And you can do that just by working it so that it's not sticking everywhere. But I thought it looked better curved in rather than standing straight up. Okay? So you can work on that too. Um, and then you're just going to pick your flowers and your leaves and you're just going to glue them down and embellish how you want. Now, the stabilizers, these pieces right here, that's what we're going to work on now. But we don't want all that bulk so that it shows through the window. We don't want that. How can we fix that? So, let's go back over to Design Space and make our panels. So I am just going to, because we're finished with all of this for now, well, actually, or not. Let me leave one. I'm going to select all these and group them and get them out of our way. Okay. And guys, you really don't want, well, you can't because I did upload into this one, so you can't anyway. If you copied that, it wouldn't open. But I was going to say, I haven't tested this one. You always want to cut a test out of uh, your inexpensive papers like craft paper and stuff and see make sure everything fits before you cut it out of your good papers so now I need a stabilizer so I'm going to get oops my well I actually I wanted to bring that photo back insert just so that this is what we're duplicating, guys. This is a shapeability die. We're not really duplicating it. We're using it for our inspiration to make our box card. So this is where everything is stemming from. Again, if you want it to be exact, you would need to get the shapeability die from Spellbinders. Yes, it would make an amazing vase for the Leah Griffith Cray Paper Flowers, Jamie. It would be gorgeous so now we have that let's go and get a shape i'm going to get this time an octagon and a square what else do i need i don't need a circle but i'm going to grab a circle just in case i'll need score lines in a minute so let's go in and i am going to size up my square and I want that square to come right at the top. I am going to need a circle for this one because I made my circle a little deep. If yours meets up and covers this area right here without getting into the circle, you don't need a circle. So let's unlock. And I want to make this just slightly, I mean just slightly, smaller than the side and the score line. And I tell you that because we're going to have some welding onto that and it's going to make up that space. But you want it just ever so slightly smaller to fit right up on that edge, but just inside that score line. And I'm going to bring mine up to cover this so I have room to glue. And I am going to bring it down. It can meet the bottom. That's perfectly fine. Now I'm going to bring my circle in here. I'm going to make it just a little bit deeper than that. I'm going to select the two. I'm going to align center. Oops. Horizontally, not center. Align. Center it horizontally and slice because these are just stabilizers but I don't want it to show through the window when I put them in so I want to make sure that it's down below my window 
and this is what I'm going to glue pieces to if I want things to pop up in that box through the windows. That's all these pieces do. So now that I have that, now I need to make sure that it doesn't show the bracing pieces when I glue them in. I'm, they're going to glue basically right about here. Okay? And if those show through in your windows, you can just nip them off with scissors. You don't need to worry about that. You can nip that anything off that's going to show through your window when you dry fit it. Just snip it off with scissors. There's no need to slice all of that. But you can if you want to. You don't have to. But once it fits in there, it's probably going to end up right about here. So what I'm going to do, first of all, get another square. And I need that little tab like I used over here. I need one of those. But I'm doing this one from an octagon. And I'm going to slice it. And I'm going to save that because I'll probably use that. And again, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I was a little off. And I want it to be the same height. So this piece is 2.074. So I need that one to be 2.074. I need it to be the same height. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to flip it horizontal. You're going to bring that to the other side, just like so. I'm going to duplicate that, and I'll show you why here in just a moment before I weld on. And I know that that's not inset enough. There we go. Just going to bring them in. And select all three pieces. I'm going to align bottom. And weld. And that one, I had that one a little off, but it's not going to hurt anything. Now I'm going to make this one arrange. Bring it to the front change the color of that one so we can see it doesn't matter what color I'm going to align it center bring it over here where we can see it I'm really through with this piece right now so for now no I'm not let me just slide it down I want to make sure you guys can see this I'm going to get my shapes go to score line I'm going to change that score to a draw or a cut, whatever you want. I'm going to place it in there, and we're going to size it. I'm going to duplicate it. Bring it over. I should have changed it to score before I duplicated it, so let's just do that. Change it to score. Bring one over. Now I'm going to get rid of that. Let me change this to white so you guys can see the score lines. Arrange. Oops. Send that to the back. I, it must not have duplicated. Okay. But I know where it goes because I got that one off a little bit. There you go. And then you're going to align top or bottom, either one that you want. Going to slide this out of the way, and again, I'm going to attach my score lines. So now my score lines are ready, I'm done. So now, here comes the part about how we hide those braces. So let me send this backwards. I know that I'm going to place one right about here and one right about here on the inside of those. So I'm going to line those bottom. I'm going to take this and I am going to unlock it and I'm going to skew it. Okay, I don't want to go past my score line. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to skew this up until 
it covers the area in the back not going past my score right there I want it right up on the score but I want it to cover those areas basically making a point for those and I'm going to duplicate it and I am going to flip it horizontal I'm going to bring it over here right now I don't need that piece you want to save yours but I, I don't need that I'm just going to bring this piece over I've already flipped this I am going to bring that one right up to the score line and they're not aligned so I need to bring this one down I want to align those to the top yep make sure that the one that you want to align is the one that moves when you do that I'm gonna select the two weld them I'm gonna grab my score lines out of the way I'm going to slice I haven't moved them and now we have our stabilizers I know the piece looks kind of weird We're going to align the center. Arrange, move that to the back. And you can make these score lines just short little pieces there. You can leave them whole. It's not going to hurt anything and attach. And now you can fold those stabilizers and you can put them on the inside. You want to just duplicate it. You can put them on the inside right here. They're going to glue to your tops. If you have to trim anything up, just trim it at that point. But it's going to allow this space right here to stay open so that you don't and these are kind of crude guys in the other file they're exact the way that they're supposed to be um i didn't cut anymore but that's going to eliminate what's it showing in this window right here through your vellum okay and it i also like i said i kept a piece from my slicing just to put so if you want to put a piece of decorative cardstock back there then you don't have to worry about it you can leave your stabilizer without that cut out and you can also do that with scissors after you do it if you just want to leave those straight all up to you hey purple yeah so this wouldn't fold flat if you put a bottom in it you wouldn't be able to fold it flat it, it well you you could but you can't have the stabilizers for the box card and the bottom that's not gonna do that but you could sent, turn this into a box very easily um instead of a box card simply by um let me show you adding your bottom onto the bottom of this uh, just like any other box Let's go back over to design space. Okay, if you wanted to make this a box, you would eliminate these pieces. You wouldn't need stabilizers to make this a box. Um, I'm just going to get rid of these. We don't need all these pieces. I've showed you how to make them. That's all we needed those for. If I were going to make that a box, you're just going to need the pieces on the bottom that are going to fold up. And I have found um, you can come in here and you could actually slice from a box, guys, and use the box bottom for those. You just want to make sure that they're going to line up. Um, let me just go to... Tags, bags, boxes, and more. They have tons of boxes. Why is it not pulling up my cart cartridges? There we go. You have box cards here. Guys, you could take one of these box cards and, and there's one that, no, that's not quite rounded. You can just round off the top of one of these and do those two. It's very simple. I'm just showing you how to do the Pinterest from scratch so that you can make your own uh, boxes. Well, let's just pick that box right there. 
so I can insert that. Eh, wrong box. That won't work. Let's get rid of that. It has the wrong kind of Those are scoring wheel boxes. I don't know. That one might work. Yeah. But you see how they... I don't like that. See how they did these tabs here? You just need to make sure that whatever your dimension is, and you can find out the dimension of your box by simply getting a square. And I'm pretty sure that this is three. 0.11 it is so your box is going to be 3.11 square you need to make sure that those are deep enough to meet in the middle and they've got the way they did this is they did a rectangle and they attached it but we don't have this depth so you would need at least one side of your box because you're going to have four panels and your two panels will look differently you're going to need that depth attached on and then you can do these little arrow type closures that they have and you're going to insert your score lines that's a little bit more difficult to make those type box bottoms are a little more difficult to make but you're basically going to make sure that everything meets up and that on your closure for the bottom and that's another whole lesson because it will take me probably an hour to explain to you guys how to, to do that and cut it and make sure that everything meets with your width and height. That's a more of a width and a height lesson. So, did everybody understand how to do the Pinteresting project? How to look at a project and determine what shapes you need in order to recreate and get something similar? I think we came pretty close. I mean, we're not exact, but I think we're pretty good. And like I said at the beginning, you can determine your height. You can make this shorter if you want. Um, but those are the basics on how to recreate something like that and make it your own. Totally your own, your own design. You can share it with others. You don't have to share it with others. If you use all design space images, you can share it. And we want to thank Vicki Parker. This was her pen. She selected and asked how we could recreate something like this. So thank you, Vicki, for that. Guys, you can give your suggestions. It's bit.ly slash patpenpro, I think it is. It's on the um, splash screen at the beginning. You can... You can submit a pen that you want us to recreate. However, I will only be selecting at this time Patreon pens. But anybody can pen, but I'm only selecting Patreon pens. My camera doesn't want to switch over. What's going on there? I'll have to fix that. So... Does anybody have any questions? Any at all? I'm happy to answer your questions and, and work with you on this. I actually thought that this would take a couple of hours, but you guys are awesome. You ask your questions and you followed along. Again, if you forgot to ask a question, guys, you can ask in the groups. You can ask me. You can ask Jamie, uh, Sue, uh, Louise. They're all very knowledgeable in design space and they can help you achieve anything if you forgot if you're not get, it's not giving you the slice option or anything like that, they know what to look for. So when you're doing that, give them a screenshot if you have questions of your canvas and include your layers panel. They really need to see that layers panel because that's the brain of design space. And when something's not working, if they can't see that layers panel, they can't pinpoint what's going on and why you're not getting your options. So it's very important to include those with your screenshots. Does anybody have any questions whatsoever? Thank you, Kathleen. Um, yes, Debbie, you can add in things inside that box. 
Uh, it's a box card. You can cut any shapes. Um, on the Pinterest, I didn't clip that one page. On the splash screen, you can see I gave the other view on the splash screen. These flowers are inside. So you can make some cray paper flowers to stick up in there. Uh, those stabilizers are what you're going to glue anything that you want on there. Yes, screenshots help get your questions answered so much faster, especially if you're in a hurry, um, because that way we don't say, okay, well, you can probably slice or you can weld or maybe you can use contour. We're guessing at what it might be because we've been there and we've done that. But when we can actually see that screenshot, we know by looking at it exactly what you need to do. And we can say here, this is what you need to do to achieve that look and you're done. Otherwise, it's a back and forth. Ten, we're playing 20 questions without a screenshot that includes the layers panel. All right, guys, please, guys, lay out your Pinterest. Anybody who wants me to feature their um, project on a board in Pinterest, make, make your file and cut it, put it together, send me a photo, and I will pin it on the board in Pinterest. You can use vellum or acetate, Debbie. Um, you will see, if you use the clear windows like I did, you will see your stabilizers at the bottom. But what I did is I cut in the other file, there is a, a second piece for the bottom that you can do in vellum or cardstock to put at the bottom and close that up and make it darker and then use the acetate at the top. Or you can actually cut it in two different pieces. It's however you want to do it. Um, you can cut two pieces. You can cut a circle and then you can cut that bottom piece and do it in two different things. All you got to do is slice it in half down there. Just slice it in half but you want to slice it with a circle so that they meet up, if that makes sense. You want them to meet up at, on the inside. So I would just take a circle and slice the two, slice that one piece in half and then cut one from one color and one from another. That way you have your window at the top clear and then you have a color, a cardstock or vellum at the bottom. So many possibilities with this card, guys. So many possibilities. So build your file, cut it, create it, send me a photo, and let's pin those on Pinterest. Let's get you guys some recognition for your work. All right, guys, I appreciate everybody joining me. Thank you so much. I will see you on Monday. Not sure what we're going to do yet. If you've got something you want to see in particular, make sure that you drop me a message in my messenger and uh, we'll consider that for the live tutorial on Monday. See you at 7 o'clock. You guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.